One of the hi-fi industry buzz companies of the last 18 months has definitely been Wim, with their now range of very affordable digital music streaming DACs. And when they released the Mini, which is a very fully featured product that costs under £90, I think they really shook up the industry because it's such a fully featured product for that very reasonable price. And it must have been Wim's goal to create products that cater for everybody features and price but I know all too well that it's impossible to please everyone all of the time so now with their latest product the Pro Plus which costs a bit more £219 but it is more featured even more fully featured than the Mini have they been able to do it? Have they been able to create a product that will please everyone or have they maybe gone too far or still not gone far enough? And I have been testing both to see if you should spend the extra on the Pro Plus or keep your money in your pockets and get the Mini instead. And let's start with the obvious similarities and differences. And I have to say the packaging of both is very nice and high quality. So the buyer experience is no worse for spending less. And the included accessories is quite similar too. However, with the Pro Plus, you do get a remote control and at least here in the UK, a plug for powering the unit. And it's an Apple style one, which is very nice. But the most obvious difference is of course the form factor. The Mini really is Mini. Hold it in the palm of your hands, Mini. The Pro Plus is still compact, but noticeably larger, and it definitely looks more pro. It has more of a high-end hi-fi component look and feel about it. But the build quality of both is very similar. They are both very plasticky and lightweight, which I am fine with at their price points. However, I do think it is important to point out that I have a number of products here from iFi Audio from their Zen range. And these are similar priced to the Wim products and they have all aluminium enclosures, which is definitely nicer. This definitely feels nicer and is more premium. But there's one advantage to the all plastic design of the Wim products and that is their Wi-Fi and Bluetooth aerials are built in and not sticking out of the back like we see with a lot of Hi-Fi products that have all aluminium chassis. And obviously I prefer, of course, not to see any aerials. And I also prefer the layout and large variety of connections in and out of the Pro Plus. It's more of what I'm used to for a high-end Hi-Fi product for sure. And I prefer the flexibility offered here with the multiple digital and analog inputs and outputs. And I would pay a premium for that. However, some might find the lack of a balanced output maybe not being Pro Plus enough. But looking at things very practically, if you know all you want to do is stream music via Wi-Fi, maybe using a digital Toslink connection to your DAC, well then the Mini might be just perfect for you in terms of connections. But you are quite limited beyond that, especially with just one 3.5mm analog connection in and out. But again, that could be just fine and enough for you. One major difference between the units is with their networking. Both work via Wi-Fi, but the Pro Plus also has a LAN connection, which could be essential for some who maybe have poorer Wi-Fi at home. So on the face of it, the Pro Plus definitely seems aimed at audiophiles, you know, people that have maybe very varied systems and quite extreme demands. Whereas the Mini seems more aimed at maybe a general customer, someone who values features, flexibility and price, maybe above all else. And if that kind of helps you, if you know what type of customer you are, well then great, that might help you straight away. Especially as both Wim products take their power from USB-C, which makes them infinitely flexible to be powered from any USB power source. And the obvious choice here would be a phone charger, such as what's included with the Pro Plus, but you can just as easily use a battery power pack if you want to power your Wim off of the mains grid, which is a very audiophile thing to do. And I tested two options here and preferred to use an MPF style battery. And I use loads of these for my camera gear, so I have lots of them at home. And they are very affordable and available on Amazon. However, I think for the ultimate in simplicity, you may wish to take power from your amplifier if it has a spare USB socket. I have been testing with the Audio Lab 9000A, and both WIMS work fine like this. But I definitely preferred the sound using the MPF battery or the battery power pack. But that definitely comes at the cost to some convenience. So again, it's just where your priorities might lie here. 
A quick glance over the spec differences, and there isn't a huge difference. Both support 192kHz 24-bit, so again you're not being shortchanged in this instance by spending less, but there are some important differences. The Pro Plus has a better CPU and more RAM, so it's a more powerful machine. It also has some additional features, such as supporting Chromecast audio, Apple AirPlay Cast, and a couple of other things. But the bulk of the features are very much the same, so some might be starting to question the value proposition of the Pro Plus. The biggest difference between the Pro Plus and the Mini is with the built-in DAC. The Pro Plus features a higher performance DAC chip from a high-end manufacturer, AKM, that has much better performance numbers, and there is also a higher spec analog input. And I do have to question why we need an analog input with a product like this, but then I have to remind myself that the WIMS are all very much multi-room products, so they can all link together and kind of feel sound for your whole house. So somebody might want to maybe feed their CD player or maybe their turntable, their vinyl, into the WIM products and then listen to their records literally all over the house. But remember not to be too far away from that turntable because you will need to, you know, turn the side of the record fairly often. I think probably the most impressive part of both of these WIM products is actually the ecosystem, the platform that has been built for yes, WIM products of today and I'm sure into the future to be built on and used and based upon. And that is all controlled through the WIM Home app. And I think WIM have been extremely smart here and built a very easy to use, heavily featured app and platform that a variety of their hardware can benefit from as I mentioned into the future and kudos to them as the Wim Home app is excellent. It's fast, reliable, and you get nigh on the same experience with the Pro Plus and Mini. So again, no shortchanging of your experience for spending less. And I found the wizard of the Wim Home app to set up each, each individual product really simple and just easy to use and perfect actually. There was no kind of messing around. I followed the instructions on the screen and then under a couple of minutes, I was logged into my Tidal account and playing music. So if this is your first kind of foray into, you know, high end or dedicated hi-fi products, then I think you can have confidence that, you know, you don't need to be an expert. It's very, very, very simple and easy to use. And within the app itself, Wim have definitely made things really simple to use. Along the bottom, you have tabs, starting with device. You choose which Wim product you want to play music from, and you can group or link them together to create a multi-room playback with the option to set the latency. So there is no time delay between the different zones in your home for that uh, 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 kind of stuttery sound that is absolutely horrendous. So I really, really love that feature. I think it's super cool. Then within Browse, you can access saved presets. There is a shortcut for your favorite songs and a very nice feature, your recent played tracks. That option I really like. Scrolling down, we can see the different music services that are supported. From what I can tell here, it's pretty much all of them except Apple Music. And for me, using Tidal through the Wim Home app was pretty much the same experience as using the Tidal's own app for controlling and, and navigating and exploring their music, including, including like looking up all the new stuff and playlists, etc. So it kind of negates the point of using the Wim Home app for Tidal. I think you're probably better off just going to Tidal and using Tidal Connect. So we're not really gaining anything here, but we're definitely not losing anything either. I'm not a big fan of the Tidal app, which is why I've mentioned this. I prefer to use the JPlay app, which I find to be much more intuitive and better for creating a play queue of music from varied albums. And I was able to use the JPlay app perfectly using the DLNA support of both whims, whereas others might want to use Rune. And as best I understand it, the Pro Plus is Rune ready, whereas you can use Rune with the Mini, but you would have to do it through AirPlay too. So I think if you are a Rune user or intend to use Rune with the Wim products, well then I think it's definitely worth considering the Pro Plus or maybe just the Pro, they seem better choices here. 
search is pretty self-explanatory and settings might appear to be too, but it's just settings for the app. What we really want to access is the settings for each WIM device. And this is done back in the device tab. You click the cog icon and there are some really important options here, especially for sound quality. Audio settings is a very important option as you can fix the volume at maximum, which I did for this review. And we can select our digital output data rate maximum, which is important for, of course, getting the highest resolution playback from our streaming service. But what I want to really bring your attention to is the equalizer option, because I found this to be invaluable for getting the best sound from both the Mini and Pro Plus. There are two different equalizers built in, a pretty standard graphic equalizer and a more technical parametric equalizer. Now a parametric equalizer can be an extremely useful tool if you know how to use it, if you know how your speakers are measuring in your room and if you maybe have some bass room modes that need some attenuation, you can do that here. So that is a great tool for a more advanced user and I have to you know, take my hat off to a product for offering this that costs under £100. That can be a really amazing tool. However, for me, I use the graphic equalizer to in real time make a very noticeable subjective improvement to how both the Mini and Pro Plus were sounding through the system I reviewed them in. And I found this to be such a powerful tool to make such a, an improvement and significant difference and improvement to the sound quality of both Win products that I actually found it difficult to listen with it off. So I listened for most of the review time with it on. Now I have a huge amount of experience with equalizers. I play with these all of the time and I appreciate not everyone has this. So I've actually posted up my settings maybe as a little bit of a guide to help people out on my Patreon, which I'll put a link to in the video description box down below. It's definitely something I would consider any Wim product owner maybe try and explore. For me, the difference was you know, literally huge. And interestingly, I did find the Pro Plus responded a little better to the equalizer and gave me a better result. And I wonder if it's because it has a better processor. So this is definitely a difference between the units. But again, the Mini at the lower cost still has those same features and you can still use them in the same way, maybe slightly different to get the best result, but in the same way to make an improvement to the sound. That's really, really powerful. Time to talk sound quality, and I did all of my listening, testing, and comparison using the Audio Lab 9000A integrated amplifier, driving the Revival Audio Atalante 5 speakers. And the Audio Lab has a very nice DAC built into it, based around a high end DAC chip from ESS, the Sabre 9038. Pro. So I was comparing the two WIMs to each other, but also comparing them to the Audio Lab for the DAC's performance. But let's start with the digital performance of both of the WIMs. And I connected them to the Audio Lab 9008 in the exact same way, using the exact same Toslink digital cable. And I was expecting their performance to be identical, really. I was expecting the exact same sound quality from both. But I actually don't think it was the same. But both units in the main sound pretty clean. They tended to push vocals forward, which was okay because the vocals were clean. And then the rest of the music was all there in an organized fashion. And for both price points, I have nothing to complain about really. However, I will be honest, I was struggling to get very excited listening to either. I found the overall dynamics to be very play it safe and reserved, which is okay because it makes music very palatable, but also not very exciting. And this is the area where I found the difference between the Mini and the Pro Plus. Again, the Pro Plus just sounded just that little bit more kind of sure-footed and solid and slightly more, I don't know if I necessarily want to say more dynamic because it wasn't that, it was just a bit more planted. Everything was a bit more just sure-footed across the sound stage. Again, an audiophile difference here. But that difference was definitely compounded or made more significant when I changed from using Wi-Fi to using my LAN, which is... Better than average LAN connection here. Via wireless, I was finding the treble of both units to be very detailed, but a bit splashy or zingy. But using my LAN setup seemed to help subdue this a little and make for a more pleasing overall listen. So again, this is a noticeable edge to the Pro Plus. 
But it was the equaliser and how I had set that that made the biggest difference here. It was helping to more solidify the sound, just to, to kind of fill in and take away the hollowness that I was hearing from the overall sound. And that was especially true in the vocals, helping to kind of more flesh out and solidify the vocals, to, I think, to make them sound more, more planted in the soundstage, but also more rich, more warm, and therefore more natural. And having a bit more bass, and presence in the room and in the overall soundstage warmed the whole sound up, made it sound more solid, more sure-footed again. And I was also able to just increase the upper, upper reaches dynamics as well with the equalizer. So that was making the sound a bit more forward, a bit more direct, a bit more come to me. And I actually preferred that because it was because it was more immediate. It was keen to get more out of the speakers in terms of the energy of the music, rather than it being quite a sat back, easygoing kind of very ultra reserved sound and for me the difference was night and day and like I said I didn't really want to listen to either product with the equalizer off once I'd got it how I liked it now I need to stress that it's definitely not perfect you know we can't expect it to be perfect for everything all the time but you know in the main I was finding yeah the sound was significantly better and I much preferred it so Look, listening between the two, the Pro Plus, because it seemed to handle the equalizer better, it seemed to give me, again, a nicer, better, more pleasing listen for longer periods of time. Even with the equalizer engaged with the Mini, I was still never, never quite fully satisfied with the sound. Then comparing the built-in DAX, this is quite an easy one for me. For starters, the equalizer makes a bigger difference overall than changing between the DAX, but there is still a big difference here. The DAC in the Mini is okay when you have the equalizer set good, but you can hear in an AB with the DAC in the audio lab, it's not nearly as clear or as smooth or as enjoyable to listen to, but it's okay. It was better than I was expecting it to be, again, with my equalizer turned on. But using the AKM DAC in the Pro Plus is a little more interesting because in the options, we have six different DAC filter modes to choose between. And while I like being able to adjust my sound, normally DAC filter modes make a very small difference. And that was the case here. I listened between them and then I just preferred the super slow roll off NOS option. And this filter option just sounded the best to me. It sounded like the smoothest and maybe just the nicest and the most pleasing overall, which is normally what I'm listening for when I'm you know, selecting between DAC modes. And interestingly, making the sound a little bit smoother, a little bit softer, a little bit nicer, worked really great, again, for just taking away that little bit of splashy and zinginess that I was hearing with the treble. But I've got to say, the AKM DAC in the Pro Plus it's really very interesting. Comparing that to the DAC in the Audio Lab, things were now much, much, much closer. And I would say the DAC in the Audio Lab sounds a bit smoother and a bit more rounded off, whereas the DAC in the A or the AKM DAC in the Pro Plus definitely is more details centric. But after listening between them, I actually found myself favoring the AKM DAC in the Pro Plus, which was not what I was expecting at all. So you know what? That's a you know a great thing. That's a really big win, really, for the Pro Plus. So at this point, I wanted to test things further and I installed the highest end components that I have here right now, about 40,000 pounds worth of pre and power amplification. And yes, I could hear the limitations of the Pro Plus as a source and DAC compared to others that I've had here recently that cost a hell of a lot more. But so long as I had my equalizer enabled, the Pro Plus sounded absolutely fantastic through this system. Much, much, much better than I was expecting it to. Much better than it had any has any right to for £219. And it was the analog or the DAC sound quality into the very high-end system with the equalizer on that makes me want to give... You know, Wimmer clap because it was sounding, like I said, much better than I was expecting for £219. However, if I turn that equaliser off, the clap goes away too. Time to sum up this very long comparison review. I can see why there has been so much fuss made for the Wim products as a whole, because they are very well thought out and they can belong in audio files, hi-fi systems, as much as they do belong in non-audio files, you know, very general, real-world, multi-room systems, all for very affordable price points.
And hopefully this review, comparison review, has helped you make the right decision about which Wim product might be best for you. I think if you want the best of everything, well then of course you want the Pro Plus. However, if you want the, the bulk of the best features, but definitely know you won't want the DAC, well then the Pro might make more sense to you at about a £50 saving. However, if it's purely features and price and that price, bang for buck, value proposition that you're really looking for, then the Mini makes the most sense, of course, so long as you can live with some of the constraints that come with that. So I actually think it's a very well-developed, even though there's not huge differences between them, it actually it's a product range that makes sense. Which of them best suits which customer? So they've almost made for me products here that are suitable for everyone, almost, of course. So I hope they, you know, Wim continue to develop the products more into the future because I've been far more impressed with them than I was expecting to be. Yes, they're not perfect. And I'd like to see, obviously, of course, the sound quality performance keep going up. That I'd definitely like to see. And I'd also like to see a Wim Pro Dirac Live. Now that would be yeah, a real industry changer. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you appreciate my take on hi-fi reviewing, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. At the same time, if you'd like to support the work that I'm doing, also maybe consider supporting me at Patreon, especially if you'd like to see my Wim EQ settings. That's definitely not me. You know, hyperboling, you know, something that I've done here, the difference was absolutely massive.